You guys are still here. Uh, g'day everybody. Um, how's it going? Um, great to see you here and um, yeah, so it's all okay. Um, Cause we're all on freeway. That, so I, um, I, just, I like that song and um, I think it's pretty funny. Not my usual, not my usual start to it, but um, hopefully everyone thought there was a bit of a laugh. Um, great to see you all here. I've been, um, as you always know, I always look forward to the next stream, and I've been looking forward to this since the um, the last one ended on Monday. Well, Monday for me. I think it was Sunday for you. One day I'll, I'll you know, actually figure out how time zones work, but that day's not today. Um, so thank you all for being here, and. The last couple of streams, we obviously were focused on um, Bald Beaver Hunter, a.k.a. John Wesley Elliott. Uh, but I've had enough of him now. I enjoy doing that, but um, he, he gets a bit much. And on top of that, I really, really missed doing lawn stuff. Um, so, so we're going to be back on lawn for quite a while now because he, he just is the gift that keeps on giving. And, you know... I never thought I'd get to the stage where I missed a lawn, but here we are. So today, we've got a couple of Winnie calls we're going to go through. Um, both of them are fairly similar themed. They're all about lawn being jealous and also about Winnie trolling him. And these are, um, like these are some really good Winnie calls. Like she really rolls him up and he gets really defeated and, and it's, just, it's just great. Um, so that's what we're going to do. And then we're going to finish with another instalment of the Lawn Reality Show, which that's something else I've been, um, which I've been really enjoying. Um, it's there. I think I think they're a really good way to to end a stream because especially if we've had a stream where um, Lawn's been a particular asshole, um, you know, we haven't had those really great calls where he's crying and all that kind of shit. So it's it's a really good refresher to hey, you know. Let's just all finish laughing at this absolute fucking wanker. So, thank you all for being here. Uh, Winnie's boyfriend slash husband. Hi, honey. Um, and Winnie's boyfriend friend slash husband has once again done the stream art, which is this awesome picture here. So, we've got um, Mr. Penis um, OBGYN, because as we all know, Lorne um, thinks that obstetricians, gynecologists... Um, walk around with 24-7 hard-ons because that's exactly what Lorne would do. It's your vagina, goddammit. A place where only I should fucking be. Um, so thanks again, Winnie's boyfriend slash husband. Swifty, uh, good to see you, Swifty. And yes, as I said, I too am very excited about some more Lorne reality show. Hello, Becca Oak, great to see you. Pam Simpson, uh, great, great to see you here. Rachel D, uh, YouTube bot. Mandy S, yes. um... David Gies, yo, uh, Kilroy, hello, hello, uh, Craigo, good to see you, Craig, I haven't seen you for a little while, so good to see you again, uh, my name is 22, and I'm Adriana years old, still one of my favourite names, um, Asbury Brad, hello, Amir Shollett, hello, Spencer Silvera, Cornville Councillor, Kilroy, I already said hello to you, Kilroy, you got, you got two hellos, um, Fantastic. Well, why don't we crack into it? So the first call is um, so the first call he is talking to Winnie. And hang on, I've just got to remember my context here. Um, oh yes, so this call is called "Jealous of Guy Sleeping on the Floor." So essentially, uh, Winnie he she has a, a guy over who is sleeping. Well, slept on her floor last night because he got too stoned. Um, and couldn't drive, so he stayed there, but of course, Lorne hates that, and he's going to um, let Winnie know that very clearly. Um, and, oh, g'day ma'am, yes ma'am, great to see you, and g'day Kathy Mac, good to see you, I feel like I just um, saw you, we'll um, wrap in, in Raptor Bacon stream just before this. Um, Coyote Lady, uh, 613, great, great to see you. Alright, let's do it. Are you still mm -hmm. mad at me for having sex? For having sex? Yeah. I am extremely pissed off about that shit. <laughs> but I did it. The thing is, we're in love with the jello. You need to keep your hands off other people. 
Okay. They need to keep their hands off of you. Okay. They need to keep your clothes on. Okay. And, uh, as, a, as a, a given rule. You keep saying I had uh, sex, but I didn't. You're fucking a guy's leg. Uh, I didn't come. I don't even like that. <laughs> She, she didn't come, Lorne, so it's fine. Like, she's allowed to hump a guy's leg. She didn't come. Um, and g'day, uh, Angel and Elle. I haven't actually um, seen you before, so great great to see you. And what I was just going to say, <clears throat> I've noticed in, in, like, this stream here and, and other streams I've been around, we, there's some, like, new... Well, at least new to me, there's a, quite a few people around that I hadn't seen their names until recently, which is... Fucking fantastic, to be honest, because as I've said before, this is the best community on the internet. I firmly believe that, but it only keeps strong and keeps going by having new people um, coming into it. So it's awesome to see new people, and I hope that keeps up. And anyone who's new, like I, I hope you're really enjoying it. I know from my experience, I've been around here for years now, that everyone is, well, I say everyone, let's say 99.9% .9 of this community are incredible, incredible people. I, and I mean some of the best people I've met, not just online, but in real life. We've had our um, Jorans and other here and there. Um, but outside of that, everyone is just so friendly. So new people, if, if you kind of... and On top of that, this shit is crazy, yeah? Like, these calls are fucking nuts. And it's confusing, and all this different shit happens, so... If you have any questions, um, ask me. Ask me anytime. If you're in this stream, shout out questions. I'm happy to do Q and A and stuff. I mean, I've been around for years, and I still get confused about all this. So I can only imagine. And I remember what it was like when I first came in. I was like, "What's happening?" So um, shout it, shout it out, guys. Um, cool. And uh, g'day, Amy A. Good to see you again. I, I was um, just rapping with you too in in Raptors. Uh, crack God. Um, and, um, Kingpin. Oh, thanks, Kingpin. I, I, I think you're pretty special, too. I don't even, I don't like to even picture you doing that to a guy's leg. Well, you, you should like it. Oh, I, my leg? Fine. Some other, some other guy? No. No. You already know how pissed off and jealous I am, so... Obvious, you know, you know, I don't like that. I didn't fuck anybody, I never, yeah. So, so she already knows how, how jealous and all that he gets. So, he's he's jealousy and he's a massive issues, like everything is someone else's problem. So, he, he won't make any um, any adjustments to himself to try to work on his jealousy issues or or say, you know what, this is this is too much for me, I, I can't handle the way she is. You know, so I'm going to remove myself. You know, I've asked her, can she, you know, stop cheating on me? Can she stop? And really, if you have to ask your partner to stop cheating on you, maybe that is time to walk away. But but Lorne won't do that because you have to change for Lorne. That's that's what happens. Um, and g'day, not a whole lot. And g'day, Scorchy. Um, a few more people coming there. Peewee is great. Great to see you. Um, well... You out with your beach friends on Angelo boat. Fucking Angelo. Jill, I just go be fat and ugly at a party and people are like, hey, <coughs> we'd like to see your tits. Yeah. So I take off my shirt now and yeah. I play with my titties and suck on them. But that's it. I mean, what, what else is she meant to do, Lorne? She goes to a party. People say we want to see your tits, so she she gets them out. Like it's not like she's getting them out without being asked. I mean, come on, mate. The shit that you didn't tell me before. I told you last night with Eric, and you told me you were gonna kill him. Mm -hmm. You forgot. Is, is Eric me? Is Eric me? <laughs> I don't know. Eric's popular. And sex. And ma'am, yes, ma'am. Oh, sorry, I just saw your comment now that you left. Um, uh, Raptor Bacon's to to come here like that is that is I mean Raptor Bacon is amazing. Um, I didn't actually realise it's going to be streaming at the same time, so fully expected people to stay there. But you know, am amazing to see you here as it always is, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. But still fat and hairy though. 
So I could see how you could get confused. Uh, are you in love with her? No. Are you, are you in love with me? No. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, 100% Winnie's boyfriend slash husband. This is Winnie as her best. When she trolls him like this, it is it is so good. I mean, I know some people aren't a big fan of the Winnie character. And, and there are calls... Um, look, there are calls where I find her a bit much. But she is so good when she is like this because she is basically just giving him enough to get rolled up but then pulling it back. So it just... It kind of pulls and prods him and that kind of thing. And... The Winnie character itself is a great character because really they created her to be the female lawn. You know, without the pedophilia and all that kind of stuff, the, the, her kind of behaviour, you know, not controlling herself with substances, not really doing, not being, you know, not doing the right thing like the lawn does. This is Winnie, you know. And it's, it's almost held up as a reflection to him and he can't see that and he can't see the same behaviours that he wants her to stop, he can't see that they're the behaviours he should stop. Yeah, what would you let know Eric even touch a fucking tits? He sucked on him. Why would you let him even touch him? Because I haven't had sex in a long time, and I haven't had good sex so what, in a long time. So what, you're three months away from that? You're three months? What? Hello? 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 Hello, hello. Uh, Pee Wee is great. Just um, looking at your comment there about listening at work um, and you've got two co-workers interested in the saga, it is very hard to explain. I- I've said before, there is no one in my, you know, outside of, of uh, YouTube life that knows about this because for no other reason than I would not be able to know how to explain this to them. I couldn't. It's hard enough to explain all of this to people that are have been in the community for a little while and are really active wanting to learn, but someone who, like, just in a passing conversation, be like, well, there's this guy, so he was a pedophile and, well, is a pedophile, was caught up on NBC Sting, had all these calls, and we all gather around and listen to them. Really hard to explain unless you're not into it, so I um, keep quiet, but I, I hope you're, you can get your co-workers into it. Hello. Hello. Uh, oh, now I can. Hey, you're three months away from the sex. Oh, who's this? This must be Eric. And g'day, V.O. Hoss. I am having sex. I mean, I'm not having sex. But I am in three months. So why would you fuck things up with us now? Hello? 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 <laughs> Can you fucking hear me? No, get a phone that works. He's the one with the shitty phone and the shitty reception, but it's Winnie's fault that she can't hear him. Fucking headset. Go get a landline. Fuck, can you hear me? Why don't you bang it on the table, Lawn? Yeah. Can I please send you some beer to be delivered to your house? Some what? Beer to deliver to your house. I love there. He's like, What? Like, he's probably never heard anyone offer to buy him beer, so it was such a foreign concept, he couldn't even process it. You can if you want to. I'd have to bring it over to Tony, though. Eric said that um, he was very sorry about last night, and he ordered beer to be sent to your house. No, why does Eric know my fucking address? No, he told me that he gave me the money and his credit card to send you beer to say he's sorry. <clears throat> yeah, well, don't care how fucking sorry he is. I don't want him around here or, or any of the other guys except Sebastian, unless he did something that was been Sebastian. Sam Adams. I make it, I make it, I make it. Go up. I forgot to tell her. Now I have one. Well. And just going back on what he said before, where he's like, you know, she's like, I, I haven't had sex in, in a long time and all that kind of stuff, um, which is why I needed it. And then he's like, you know, you're going to have sex in three months, obviously referring to the fictional time where she'll be coming there. Um, but really, is that something to look forward to? It'd be like, you know, if you, um, if you hadn't eaten in weeks, yeah, 
and you knew that in a week or two, you could have something to eat, but what you are going to eat was like rancid ham. But then someone offered you like, I don't know, a sandwich. You're going to eat the sandwich, yeah, because there's nothing to look forward to in Maine. But in, oh, oh. Why would you get in the shower without a towel? Because I forgot to get one on my way in, moron. Sorry, I had to walk out to get one. Nobody saw it, except for Dion. Cam, Cam Vogel, firstly, hello, mate. Um, and secondly, this is a really good point. So, um, Cam Vogel says, This version of Winnie is what would have happened if Kayla was real. He never went to meet her, and their online relationship continued with her into high school. Um, which I think is very true, and it's something that gets overlooked. I mean, obviously... Um, like, obviously, you know, him going to meet her there to have sex and that, I mean, someone doing that to a child is going to have huge, huge amounts of of issues. Like, I, I, I never like to put it, you know, it'll ruin their life. I mean, essentially, it probably does, but, like, because, you know, I don't like to say someone's life would be ruined by that because while it would make life very difficult, you know, with therapy and that, but it's going to irrevocably change their life, yeah? Um, but... Even even what Lorne was doing, even if they had never met, what Lorne was doing, and especially if that um, kept going, was going to derail her life just as much. Um, you know, the fact that this young 13-year-old child, he was regularly showing her his penis, um, him and regularly getting her to um, experiment with herself, all this kind of stuff, but... Outside of the sexual stuff, the way he was... I mean, this was a month-long chat. He was already isolating her from her family and her friends. She basically wasn't allowed to hang out with anyone at school because he would get jealous of boys being around. She wasn't even allowed to really talk to her girlfriends on the phone because he that was their time. He wanted to talk to her. I mean, even in the last couple of weeks before it happened... He was saying, you know, tell me you're the I'm the only one you're online to. So he was basically saying, you've got to say goodbye to people like Jesse and all that kind of stuff, so you can talk to me. And that just would have escalated more and more. And she would have her grades would have dropped. She would have had all these problems that come from this. So that's with removing the sexual element that he wanted to put there. He would have fucked up her life. And this is why I and most people hate motherfuckers like this and what they do to kids. Fuck him. And you don't like him anyway in here? Which is why I'll never feel any empathy for what is done to him. There's a late girl. And hey, sad face, hold on. Baby, listen. You better stop your fucking teasing me about all the goddamn guys. I'm not. Nobody can see. I just said he was here. I thought that any other fucking guys that are there should not be there. I didn't cheat on you. You were fucking touching your tits. Yeah, you cheated on me. Oh, last night you could say I cheated on you, but I didn't. You let him know you guys suck on your tits and touch your tits. Yeah, you cheated on me. I know you didn't. What are you talking about? I never said that. Yeah, you did. You told me you let him suck on your tits and. I can't hear you. <clears throat> Instead, you told me that you let air. Play with the kitchen, suck home. I can't hear you. God damn it. Fuck. I'm sorry, baby. How can you not hear me? This phone is right up to my ear. I know. I know. On my ear. The microphone is right at my mouth. I know. But you cover it with I your chin or something. Yeah. Um, I'm not covering it with anything now. I said last night you told me that he probably sucked on my tits. And I said, yeah, right. And then you accused me of it. And I told you he didn't. Well, you told me this morning that, that he did. No, he did. And I said he did not. He did not suck my tits. So what did he do? Nothing. Uh, are you sure? Or are you just going to tell me that? 
And he's so easy to convince. It's, it's like with everything. Like, you know, she clearly said that, but she will say, no, no, it didn't happen. And then eventually he'll accept it. I mean, it's it's like when... this. I mean, there's so many examples of it throughout the catfishing. You know, it's like where he accidentally got sent a text um, from... Well, from Debbie's phone, um, which it was, it was one of them. I don't know if it, exactly if it was Tiffany Lockhart, but it was clearly an incorrect text where... It, you know, it was said basically, I'll be home soon, obviously writing to their partner or their friends or something. And then she just eventually convinced him that um, it was voice to text on her phone um, from something that was said on the TV. But the the kicker to all of it is when um, Tiffany Lockhart originally played Casey and then came back later as Debbie... Um, with the exactly the exact same voice, and Lauren outright said, "I've talked to you before," and she's like, "No, you haven't." It was like, "Yes, I have. I, I remember your voice." And she's like, "I've got a very, you know, I've got a very common voice." And basically, there was about two minutes, three minutes, where he said, "No, no, I've definitely talked to her," and she's like, "No, you haven't." And then eventually, just accepted it. He can be convinced of anything. All I did was lick my pussy through my panties. And I had my panties on. I got myself three to Oh, shit. And, and you, you let another guy lick your fucking pussy. No, I didn't. Listen, don't do shit to get me fucking wound up. <laughs> Piss me off more. <laughs> I didn't cheat. Eric's not even a real guy. It was Sebastian doing his voice, stupid. You get drunk and you start believing your own lies, so I make it real for you. Yeah, but anything that you say, I, I trust and believe because it's coming from you and because you're my woman. And uh, I don't think... My woman? That you're going to lie to me. So, hey, hey, Kevin, will be... Such a shit way to refer to someone, my woman. It's been a sort of lie. Listen to me. That actually does not happen. Uh, don't tell me that it happens. Uh, tell me only real uh, shit. Uh, 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 the shower just like Eric. Uh, sit on my face. Uh, you want a picture of my car? No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can you send me a picture of your pussy? Yeah, I'll take it right now. Okay. Oh, he's so excited. Uh, I, can fu- I can fucking figure out what's going on with my headset because I wouldn't try it yesterday. So I can figure out what's going on with it. You hear me, baby? Hey, Raleigh O'Brien. God, my pussy's fucking disgusting. I'm not showing it to anybody. Yeah, you know, you show me. You show me, baby. Okay, I took it. That's my what you do. Keep sending it to me. For- all, all this ownership, and like, you know, I don't know if it if it's just me, but I, it really, like, grates on me the way he's like, you know, you know, my woman, and, and that's my pussy, and that's my tits, and, you know, my asshole, and all this kind of shit. Like, he has to own everything. Although, the only good thing to come out of that is where, um, and I will do this call in the future, where they're having the, their stupid fucking phone sex, but she's convinced him to say, you know, basically swap their parts. So basically he's saying, you know, I want, like referring to his cock as her cock and all this. So he's like, I want your cock and my asshole. That's fucking funny. Please. Oh my God, that's disgusting. No, it's not disgusting. It's my pussy too, so don't call it disgusting. That's that's pussy I'm gonna be eating for the rest of my life. No, you're not I'm gonna eat this fucking jagged mess. It's not gonna be eaten by anybody. It's gonna be closed for shit. For goods for apple. I I am gonna eat it. There you go. <laughs> there you go. What? I know you. I know you love me. Stop, baby. I love you. What are you doing on me? 
Stop being disgusting. Something disgusting? Uh, we she get, said stop. She said kitty litter. I need to... I need to kill you. She said stop being disgusting, fucking deaf prick. No, what you need to do is you need to give me, give me a blue job. I can't hear you, stupid. Gross. I said what you need to do is give me, give me a blue job. No. Yeah. I sent you a picture. Lawn doesn't understand, no. I haven't heard it yet. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking shove that fucking phone up your fucking god Uh, g'day, Pokestar. I haven't seen you before, so great, great to see you. And look, that that is an interesting question, and I quite like um hypotheticals. Um, so um, Pokestar asks if Carla was real, do we think there's a chance she would have been left in a ditch somewhere? Um, I don't. I mean, I don't think Lawn would outright murder someone I I, I I don't think that's something he would do and also I think he's he's um, too much of a, a well, he, I just don't think he would engage that but I do um, I do often wonder if um, and this potentially is the question you're asking I do often wonder if Kayla was real so say Kayla was real and everything that they planned had gone ahead so he had gone there it wasn't a sting this was uh, you know a very young child who had had been talking to him, you know, kind of got ahead of herself, you know, thought that this would be a good thing. Her parents weren't there. He picked her up, took her back to his shithole in Nashville. And then when she got there, kind of realised what's, what's going to happen. Like, you know, realised that, holy shit, I'm in, a, I'm in a place. I have no idea where it is. Um, I have this grown, disgusting man who, you know is putting his hands all over me and if she, in that situation if she freaked out like say she was just like fuck and you know started screaming i do wonder you know what he would what he would do like you know how he would handle that situation um and you know if something would happen there like you know if in trying to subdue her something might happen but i do, I do also wonder if even removing that from it you know he's he likes people that that are very very submissive so and he doesn't like the word no and he while there's no evidence of him raping someone there's also been no opportunity for him to do that so i have to wonder in that scenario say i say she doesn't freak out but she gets there and she's like no i'm not i'm not having sex with you this isn't going to happen um i would really struggle to, to imagine he would just go okay, look, no worries, I'll take you home. Um, yeah, I mean, hypotheticals are hypotheticals, and with Lorne, he's such a fucking liar, you can never know the truth, so there's um, never any harm in speculating. Um, and g'day, Gorilla Spawn. Damn loose asshole. And Mr. C. If you keep talking and I can't hear you again. Sorry, I'm still laying down, I'm tired. Oh, baby. And that's right, Mr. C, he has no furniture. Which I always love, like when in the chat log with Kayla, he's talking about, you know, he's he's going to lie down out there in front of the computer so that he can look at her picture or that, or, you know, that he's going to go to the bedroom. Like, I mean, if you don't have a bed and you sleep on the floor, like your whole house is your bedroom. Everywhere is a potential bed for you. So I don't know why he bothers distinguishing between bedroom, living room, that kind of stuff. It's all his bed. What? I love you. Hi, pretty little girl. <laughs> I didn't know. If I go to Tony, it's only, it's only so I can get Mom's uh, vacuum clean and bring it over to her. Why? Uh, I probably won't go to. I probably won't go to Tony's. Are I you probably won't do that till tomorrow. Huh? How are you gonna get your van? <laughs> G'day, JBS, and yeah, that was that was another thing, and, and this is just, Law never thinks anything through, and he never plans anything out. I mean, he talked about how little gas he had, and he'd have to try to scrounge up 20 bucks to put gas in, um, yet his plan was to go, go pick her up at Bowling Green, drive back to Nashville, do what they were going to do, and then drive her back. Like, he wouldn't have had enough gas to do that, but, but he doesn't think that far through, and, that, and that's the other thing, he... He would have been, if this wasn't a sting, 
he would have been caught regardless. Unfortunately, it might have been too late by the time he was caught for, for this child, but he would have been caught because he had no he had no plan. He just lives in a dream world. Um, yep, and, oh, uh, Pokestar, great to hear that you knew the community. Hope, hope you're enjoying it. Hope you stick around, mate. It's a great community. Um, yes. Well, Antonio... Oh, g'day, Ricardo Mercedes. He already Mercedes. brought it over. They're stupid. <laughs> well, they were quick about it. They should have made your fat ass walk. Well, they didn't want a pedophile van in their front yard. <laughs> Baby, will you stop saying that shit? Sorry. You know I hate it. that. Even if you're not a pedophile, the pedophile van. It's even worse that you chose the I'm not. I'm not a pedophile. That means I don't have a pedophile van. You are. Um, and it, it always, you know, he's always insisting he's not a pedophile. Like, you can't deny the evidence is there. But what, what I do love is one point where... He obviously looked this up, and I can't remember who it was, maybe Emma or Winnie. One, one of the catfish called him a pedophile, and he was like, I'm not a pedophile, I'm a hebophile. And, and tries to clarify that, you know, a hebophile is someone that's attracted to um, well, teenagers. I'm not sure exactly the age group, but basically um, teenagers that have started to show signs of um, adult development. L like that's any better. Like the way he said it was like he's this, you know, on this moral high ground of, excuse me, I'm not a pedophile, I'm a hepophile. Um, he's just a fucking asshole. See? You are a pedophile. No, I'm not. Okay. You know that I'm not. I'm sorry. You know that I'm not. My boyfriend's Lauren Armstrong. I meant to be talking to him. Well, you are talking to me. No, but... I'm not a pedophile. And he draws the line that, okay, I'm not a pedophile because... And because he says it other times too, but I've, I've never had sex with a child. But the only thing that stopped him from having sex with a child is Chris Hansen. Um, and, and, and the sting. Um, and also probably with the, um, the MySpace girl... The fact that I would, the fact that the, either the fate wasn't on or whatever that stupid fucking story he told is that she wised up in time. Luckily, that's the only thing that stopped him. Opportunity's the only thing that stopped him, not himself. And um, g'day, evil McNuggets. Well, well yeah, yeah so I saw it. It must be the wrong one. No, it's the right one. Just you already know, I'm not a bit of us. So don't don't know why you. Mister C, that's right. He said pedos are prepubescent, and he was um. You know, interested in um, slightly older. You would want to say that. Because it's true, and I love you, and you're stupid, and ugly, and I cheated on you last night, and you don't remember. So it's funny. Again? Again? <laughs> When's the fucking cheating going to stop, Winnie? It's not funny when you cheat on me. Yeah, it is, because you don't know me. about it. <laughs> if, I, if I ever do find out that you cheat on me. We are going to have some major problems. <laughs> we already had a major problem. Last night you called me a bitch and a cunt and a whore bag. A cunt um, hole. What did you call me? Ugly. What did you call me? Ugly. Yeah. Ugly. And. A pedophile. And. An ugly and. pedophile. An ugly pedophile. And. A he wants to hear all the insults, Winnie. A ugly pedophile. And. An ugly pedophile. And. A soft cocked, ugly pedophile with a gorilla mom. That's, that's something that royal just... And, and this is the thing too, so she's like, you know, last night you called me all these names and, and treated me like this, and he's like, well, what names did you call me? It's never, he can never have responsibility or accountability for himself, so he can never say, okay, you know, someone is treating me badly, but I'm going to make the choice not to... Not to, you know, go, like, not to go back with that. I'm going to make the choice to, to you know, hold myself. What, whatever, better, whatever. I, I don't know exactly the right word. He can never do that. It's like, well, you know, you you did too, fucking rah, rah, rah. Me off. You know I know. Me off, so don't do that. It's to you... piss you off too. No, it's she fine. Didn't, didn't... Your mom's she gorilla. She just refused your mom. Ooh, 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 she just refused your mom. Baby, come on. She's your future mom, so don't say shit like that about her. Okay, bye. 
No, don't tell me bye either. Stay right here and suck my cock. No. I love you, so I can't. Oh, I can't wait for you to be here. It's fucking... God, I, I could fuck you all day today. So much love to fuck you all day. I'm gonna eat your pussy all day. <coughs> well, <coughs> sorry, baby, I had to spit and get it out of me. <laughs> you, don't, you don't mind if I go pee, do you? Is your, sister, is your sister still mad about you coming up, moving out here with me? Yeah, but I'm not going to. You're not going to what? You're going to move here with me. No, I'm not. I can't. You know that. You are. No, you know that I can't. Oh. What's up, big handsome baby? And silly, pretty little girl and babies. Oh, now we get fucking biscuit talk. You want some breakfast? Ugh. What? What, honey? Dan's here. Dan's there. <laughs> Why is Dan, Dan there so much? I don't know. Why don't you ask? No, I mean, she's not spending time with Emma. She's fat. Nobody wants to do that. Come on, baby. We you tell me that one? She's your best friend. She'll knock it off. There's always, everyone is always, you know, it's your your best friend. It's, he's he's your, she's your mum. She's your, he's your fucking son when he's talking about Lawn Jr. Like, every, <clears throat> everyone has to be a part of his world and have ownership of his stuff. So we're talking decent. And g'day, combat mechanic. In a boulder. Treat her, treat her like a best friend. I don't have Roy really fucking help me do shit anymore. I'm just gonna think the longer we do it. Do that. You don't have anybody to use. No, no I'm not gonna use him because I help him do shit too. And just going back to something I missed that the um, JBS actually reminded me about when he talks about you know he wants to have sex with her all day. I mean, this is the guy that gets um, exhausted to the point it sounds like he may die. Um, during a five-minute jerk session. I mean, this guy couldn't have sex with anything all day. This guy would struggle to have sex for five minutes. Um, but he lives in this delusional thing that... And also, who the fuck has sex all day? Fucking crazy, can But it makes it easier for both of us to do shit. You can get shit done when... To do shit? When we help each other. No. I'm not do shit. What the hell? To do shit. Do things. I bought hot wax. I'm going to wax my pussy for the next party. Baby, I'm telling you. You better keep your fucking pussy covered. You leave <laughs> you know, you keep fucking guys away from your goddamn pussy. I am, but I'm not going to... If I find out that you are cheating on me, we're going to be done. You are... Okay, that's an empty threat. No, they're never going to be done. He would never dump anyone. But I just love the way he's like, you got to keep guys away from a goddamn pussy. Like, like it's, like, I don't, I don't know. It's like he thinks guys are like flies and she's got to keep swatting away. It's crazy. Um, and g'day, hey, boo. Don't worry about being late. Um, thanks for being here. You know that. But I cheated on you last night and told you about it. You didn't care. Uh, yeah, I did care. But I didn't cheat on you. But, um, no, well, that's what I'm saying. Is you, you, you just fucking lying to me, bullshit. Stop doing that. It's not funny at all. I sent, you, I sent you. I sent you. What it is? I sent you a picture. Did you like it? You big drunk pedophile. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't gotten it yet. I haven't gotten it yet. Do you want anything special today? You. Good. Yeah, you pussy. Shut up! Don't say shit like that, you pig. Do you want some donut? I want your pussy. Shut up. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> You're not getting that, ever. I am. Not from me, maybe from like a 
three year old who can't wait. Yeah, I am. I hate you. You're a pedophile. You fuck. Love- Doesn't he know? You pig. Will you stop it. Said shit. Pig stop shit. It. In front of the kid, you pig. Stop it. I hate you. You guys don't even need to knock the fucking bullshit off. I'm talking to Eric. Jesus Christ. Alright, finally I'm here. <laughs> Why is Eric there? He's not. Hello? You're talking to Eric. Hello? Eric? Hello? Hello? Hi. I just said Eric was there. Eric? Or Derek? Uh, never mind. I don't know if I can see it. Whatever. It's something's wrong with your phone, because I can't hear you most of the time. Well, I don't know what the hell could be wrong with it. Get it right on my head. You got? I got you on my head. No, I want you on my head. You get on my head, you can go up and down. <sighs> Did he say, get on my head, you can go up and down? Like, is he not, he doesn't really seem to know how anything works. And g'day, Amir Shalot, Shalot? Oh, oh, sorry, I, I'd love to know how to say your name. I'll, I'll try to figure it out one day. I know you love me. I love you too. Oh, it's Dan. What are you calling Dan for? I'm not calling Dan. I didn't, I didn't. I lost Dan's number. And never gave it to me yesterday. I had to write it down. And g'day, Mandy. Yes, uh, great to see you. Uh, Ember didn't have kids. I mean, uh, if we're talking about like Ember as in her character, I there was no kids that you know she was trying to have it with her girlfriend Stanley at one stage. Um, I, I actually don't know if Ember the person had had kids or not. Someone else in the chat might. Lauren. Uh, Lauren. What, baby? What, baby? Do you, do you remember what you did last night? No, what to do? You no, know, pretty girl. Are you okay, honey? You called Dan. And you told him about... About cheating. Yes, we are. Well, it's not really cheating, but you told him about having sex with other people. I told him what? You told Emma about Dan going to the clubs and having sex with other people. No, I did not. Yes, you did. Why did you rat him out? I didn't talk to Emma last night. Yes, you did. We all talked on the phone together and you made a stupid rule that whenever all four of us get on the phone that Emma has to record so you can hear it back later and make sure it's not Xavier. You don't remember oh, any of that? Nope. Well, let's call Emma so I can hear the recording back. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, hold on. Well, she said she wasn't going to record you because she thought you were tricking her. And then Dan said, I'll record. Lord's not smart enough to trick anyone. So who recorded? I don't remember if anybody did. Just because you fucking demanded it doesn't mean that they did it because they're not morons. No. I don't know. <laughs> Not a good thing. Not a big man some DB. Yeah, I'm good. Are you sick? <laughs> no, I feel fine. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to Eric. I know you're not. <laughs> you need something? Are you talking to Eric? Did you just wake up? <laughs> uh, I'm talking to Lauren. That's cool. It is? Tell him he's stupid. No. Are you okay? Yeah. What's wrong? Tell. Awesome. Thanks, Amir. So, Sherlock, Sherlock, awesome. Why are you stupid and bald? You're stupid and bald. Uh, see, he, he's okay. Yeah, you're fucking. You gay. He said you're. And good day, Shay. Say fuller. Gay. Better than being stupid and bald. <laughs> Why is there so out? What? Because he's in my bedroom right now. I let him sleep in here last night. 
Oh, would you? Isn't that a fucking peachy fucking thing going on there? Did you sleep with me, Eric? No, I slept on the floor, you idiot. So there. What? Why are you mad? Why the fuck's that talk sucker in your fucking bedroom? He fell asleep on the floor. Why is he in your bedroom? He fell asleep on the floor. I think you're fucking cheating on me is what I think you're doing. Eric, are we cheating? No, I slept on the floor. I got too fucked up and I crashed on the floor. I know. Why is he being that? Uh, did you get hit the floor in the fucking living room? What the fuck are you doing in the bedroom? I there crashed are... out here first. Why? You're in... It's her fucking bedroom. She has a boyfriend. You're in her fucking bedroom. And, like, and once again, these overreactions to... And yes, I understand that, like, Winnie rolls him up and that kind of stuff, but... <clears throat> You know, these overreactions to someone sleeping in the vicinity um, where they've clearly said they didn't have sex, just sh it, it is a real insight into the way he thinks because he thinks, okay, you were sleeping on the floor of her bedroom. There is no possible way at some point during the night you didn't, you two didn't have sex either with her consent or against her will because that is exactly what Lorne would do. If Lorne was ever in, in the situation where he could sleep next to a female, he would force his way into that situation, or at least try. Like, that is how his mind works. It's the same reason why he goes on about, you need a, you know, a female gynecologist or a female therapist and all this kind of stuff because he knows he, that's what he would be doing and he thinks everyone is the same. He thinks every guy is the same as him and they cannot restrain themselves um, in, in any way, which is obviously bullshit, but that's what this piece of shit would do. I let him in. But I was sleeping on the floor. I wasn't on the bed with her. Could you hear me fighting all night? I was fucked out. <laughs> Did you feel when I farted on your shoulder? No. <laughs> Are you ever nice to nice. your girlfriend? You fucking ass and to somebody to another guy's head. Are you ever nice to your girlfriend? <laughs> All you do is whine. Yeah, I am. What the fuck are you doing there, my girlfriend? Get the fuck out, bitch. I am. I'm leaving today. Labor Day weekend almost over. You're leaving. I'm going on the phone, my girlfriend. Talk to you, dumbass. Get the fuck out of there. Well, stop being so mean to her. You shut up, you stupid fuck. I'm not that stupid. <laughs> You're not that stupid. Why? Did you have sex with my girlfriend last night? No, I slept on the floor. I got high and I crashed out. What well, don't you understand about that? He always makes things up in his head. Hi. The fuck is another guy doing in your goddamn bedroom? Asleep. Now he's awake. He can't sleep outside on the fucking floor in the living room. Are you he's fucking kidding me? We were watching a movie in here, and he fell asleep on the floor. It was back door. You were watching a movie in your bedroom. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that fucking cute? We are watching back door Farah. I don't know who the fuck that is. I don't care. It's that chick who was on Teen Mom, what? and everybody saw her because she was hot and skinny. And she got big tits and a big ass from a surgeon. And then she used it for sex on a porno. And everybody in the world rejoiced. Like when Kim Kardashian... Like a porno. Porno. No. Be sex involved. What? There's got to be sex involved while you're around another guy. There's got to be sex involved while you're around another guy. It was funny because she was on MTV. It's okay. And nothing okay about another guy sleeping in your fucking bedroom. I was sleeping on the floor. It's so hard to sleep. Shut up, bitch. I don't even want to fucking hear your voice. You never crashed out of somebody's house? Passed out on the floor? I didn't even show him my yeah. Lorne would have to have friends to um to crash out somewhere. Um, you know, as it is, Tony won't even let him piss inside, so he's certainly not gonna let him crash on the floor. Did you see my pussy, Eric? Which makes it even crazier. The stories he tells later on when he's talking to Jamie Amy and Jamie Amy is the robot about when they're basically trying to question him and insinuate that he's a virgin. So he tells all these wild and fanciful stories of these parties at Tony house, Tony's house where, you know, 
he has sex with a woman with one breast on um, Tony's bed and all this kind of shit. Like, it's absolute bullshit. A, because the way he describes it just wouldn't happen. And B, I mean, the same people that won't let you piss inside their house, you need to go piss outside, and basically as soon as the last drop of beer is drunk, you'll kick the fuck out, are not going to let you fuck someone on, on their bed. He is just such a liar. Back. Oh. E? Why are you so worried about your girlfriend? Fucking bullshit, you got some goddamn guys around you. Do I, have pimp with them. Do I have pimples on my butt? So I can take a picture for Lauren? A little bit? Um, now you saw me and showing him your ass? No. I was just asking to see if you would start tripping. Why do you insist on stressing me out? Because I love you. Well, love me a different way. Let me know that you're not cheating on me. Not letting Stop it! Somebody's smacking something. Right. <laughs> Fuck you. Hi! Hey. You're wearing white shoes! <laughs> it's after Labor Day! <laughs> you can't wear white shoes today! Because Hitler made a rule! G'day, Lee Greer's evil twin, um, ill reg. Um, and Gorilla Spawn. That is, um, that is not a bad theory, actually. Gorilla Spawn has a theory about Farmer's Toilet Band. One drunken night and one pantry piss. That I could probably get behind that. After after Labor Day, you can't wear white shoes. It's Labor Day. It's after midnight. Have some. Um, just. Lauren, you can't wear white shoes after Labor Day, huh? Yeah, if you want to. But you can't. It's the rule, right? Remember? Our fear is sad. No. I don't remember. Oh. And I actually looked this up, which in in maybe one of the first bits of research outside of direct the direct Lawniverse that I've done for a stream, I looked this up to figure out what the fuck she's talking about. Now, other people might already know this, um... And me being the ignorant Australian, this is was news to me. But apparently this no white after Labor Day came from like back in like fairly olden times. There was a rule, a, ba a, a general rule that was kind of imposed by the aristocracy at the time. Or, you know, I, I can't remember, maybe it was 1800s or something. But basically after Labor Day, um, you know, the rich people would go to... Um, better better climates to holiday and that and they'll wear white there so if you were wearing white that was a sign that you were were rich and if you weren't rich you shouldn't have been wearing white at that time um crazy shit and g'day dark rex simo and g'day hardcore po poetry uh great to see you both don't remember hey what eric last night oh and bobby gump you snuck in there too you little ninja g'day hey remember i was telling you who i love yes who this guy named lauren See? And did we have sex in any way? None at all. Did I show you a body part? No. Except for my feet when I stepped on the poop to show you it was smeared. Yes, that was it. See, Lauren? That was not sexy. Absolutely, that is not sexy. Apologize. I'm trying to say and do things to stress me out. Apologize for accusing me of cheating. Because you're constantly yelling oh, at apologize. her. Why? Yeah. L listen, oh, and oi, 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 Dark Rick Simo. I still, don't, I still don't want to fucking hear another guy's voice when I'm on the phone with you. Well, this guy's getting ready to go, so... Hey. Because you're insecure as fuck, Lorne. Thank you for being a friend. Travel down the road and back again. Yeah. Your heart is true. You're a pal and a confidant. Yes, I am. And if I threw a party and invited everyone I knew... You would see the biggest gift would be from me. Yes. And the card attached would say, I poop out of my rear end. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. I'll be back. Oh, you will? I like your white shoes out. Don't worry, Lauren. He'll be back. And that's cool, uh, Mike Helm. Stalking, you know, um, stalking in the background's fine as long as you're not doing the kind of stalking that Lauren does. And get a kill deer. It's dressing me re-el- 
after Labor Day. <laughs> okay, he's going. Let's phone fuck, baby. <sighs> no, not right now. Why? Because I started getting a headache when we get all fucking stressed out. You didn't get a headache from that. You did it from having too much alcohols. No, he's got a he's got a headache. The poor baby. I mean. <laughs> This guy has nothing going on in his life. He talks like he's such a stud and he loves sex and all this so much. I mean, regardless, if he got offered, you know, phone sex, wouldn't he just be like, yeah, okay, whatever. Like, he's going to put up with the abuse anyway. He's going to put up with all this, I'm cheating on your bullshit. So why not just take the phone sex? Well, I didn't have a headache before and I've got one now. I just take, took some IV both and... It's because you're hungover, baby. Try to get rid of it. <sighs> Let's fuck now. No, I'm hung over until you start stressing me out. Mm, I got you hung over. Yeah. Fuck me. Oh, God, Eric left his shirt. Oh. Of course, he left some piece of clothing behind. You can sleep with it. Oh, I smell sleep with it. Who wants to sleep with it? I just want to sniff it while I touch my fucking cunt. <sighs> because you can't and that fucking cute and, and that's more shit about the way that Law like thinks and that because remember like in the chat log he wanted Kayla to leave something there of hers so he could you know feel closeness and shit with her like but you don't want to do things to stress me out yeah me me Bobby Gump I am very anxious to see how our, um, our little weirdo is looking these days. I bet you it's fucking horrid. You should really love me. Eh, hey, don't come in. I'm touching it. Sorry. I thought you were supposed to not. I did not. Oh, stop looking. Love you. Yeah, well, stop cheating on me. How did I cheat this time? No, no, you were one second. Hey, stop listening. <laughs> I didn't do anything. He was. He came in for his shirt and he took it, and I was laying on it, and I had to move. I love you, and I am pooping in the toilet just for you right now. Thank you. Wow, that's love. love. Love means pooping in the toilet and not pooping in the bathtub, huh? Yes. Have you ever had to write an essay on love? Make sure it includes pooping in the toilet. Not outside. I'm talking to Rona. What? Oh, well, why would she have to write an essay on pooping? I say stuff like that, so she gives me a funny look because I'm weird. I try to be a funny mom. You're beautiful. I am beautiful. That's why I'm irresistible. To me, yeah. I know. And here's another thing he says all the time. To me, she just said, I'm, I'm beautiful. And his instant response is not, yes, you are. It is, to me, yeah. He did that with Kayla, you know, you're beautiful to me and all this kind of stuff. Because he wants to pl implant in there that, you know, no one else is going to find you beautiful, only me. Fucking arsehole. Oh, but not to anybody else with standards. With oh, standards. <laughs> funny how you throw them little words in there. Bernie Sanders. I took a picture of you and I said, oh, wait. I took a picture. And then even there, so after he he is basically insulted her by saying, to me, yeah, she's like, 
yeah, you know, no one with standards. He he doesn't follow up. Is and, and you know, I I understand that she's obviously having to be a, a bit of a dig back at him. But to be honest, I I think that's a fairly normal. When someone says something like that, you would insult them back. So he doesn't realize. Oh, hey, I've been an asshole here, and says no. You know, you, you're beautiful to everyone, baby. But I'm you know, I'm happy that you know, you're with me or some shit like that. I don't fucking know. I'm not going to do this guy's job for him. But nah, no, nothing like that because he's just so into himself. He can't see how, it, you know, how he affects anyone. Sure for you. Yeah, I know. You sent me a black pussy. <laughs> and that's, that's where that one ends. Um, so the next one is called uh, Dirty Buttholes and Drunk Assholes. Um, which it, it's fairly similar, but this gets more into Lorne, um, you know, not wanting anyone to be, um, touching her pussy and that, and a little bit of context around this one. So, um, in the whole storyline and what Lorne's being told, either two nights ago or the night before this call, Winnie was raped, um, and... In that call, which is a call I'll get to at some stage as well, you know, he basically, you know, and following this, it was stuff like, you know, basically how hard did you fight in that? Because um, Lorne's um, mentality and thoughts on rape are pretty fucked up. I mean, no, they're very fucked up. I mean, as we heard in the Psycho Saga where um, Jamie says she was sexually assaulted when, you know, out in a corridor, someone walked past and put their fingers inside her... Um, he thought that was hilarious and proceeded to say things like, oh, were they, were they hot or not? As if that would make any difference. As if being sexually assaulted would feel, um, less violating if the perpetrator happened to be attractive. Um, and so Lorne very much thinks that rape isn't really a thing. It's basically, if you don't fight hard enough, it means that you wanted it. Um, and it's, it's stuff like this, which... Just it highlights how much of an asshole he is. But anyway, sorry for that rambling um, kind of rant there. But that's the context behind. So very recently she was raped, and this is how Lorne treats her after her very recent rape. It's just um just loading now. Hello. Uh... Oh, it just ain't close to the window, otherwise I'll Hello? lose connection. Can you hear me? Hello? 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 Can you hear me? Oh, there you are, baby. Did you get my picture? Um, I have to stand extremely close to the window, otherwise I'll lose connection. Did you connection. get my picture? I'm Hello? I'm trying to... I'm trying to re- I'm trying to reach my right head to it. Lauren? Give me a hand. Lauren, baby. Lauren, baby. My love, did you get my picture? Hello? Hello? My God. Yes, I sent that picture a long time ago. That way you can compare it to the one from last night. So you can't hear me. Hello? No, you can hear me. You just like instantly question. Oh my god, I can hear I can hear static. And then once in a while I can hear like three words. I know you can hear me. Oh. Hello? Hello? You better not get the tickets. My God. I'll see you later, Ruby, so you can look at some hard attacks from that guy. Then you can even call him to us. Hello? Fix your phone. <laughs> I can't hear anything. Uh, probably a whole lot, uh, Mandius. 
God damn you, Lord! I can't listen to it because, hold on. There we go. Okay. So we get to hear some behind the scenes stuff here, which is pretty cool. I always enjoy this. Oh. Get your old voicemail bag on there again. I tried to call you back, and all that time, all you fucking said was, Hello, hello, hello. So he's leaving a voicemail currently. I haven't tried to call me back once, so you obviously got something fucking going on there. And you're just fucking lying to me about them. God, what a moron. There's no guy, you moron, Muffin! Well, I called you. A... what? You didn't get away from me again. That guy long up Chances the phone when I called you. Why are you tripping, yo? I called you, you didn't answer the phone. So what? Some guy had your attention. Some no, guy had your attention. Not I. Some guy had your attention. No. No, of course not. All right, whatever. I'll play stupid. Nobody's doing anything. I'm just sitting here. Are you talk? Are you yeah. talking about Mr. Rogers? Yeah, uh, I'll play stupid. Hello. What's up? Are you talking, what's that? Are you talking about Mr. Rogers? If that's what his name is, then whatever. Kaiser sent him over. What's your problem? It's his job to make sure that my crutches are working, and I told them that my arm hurt a little bit, so they brought me different underarm pads and he fitted me for them I don't know if that, um, that's the only other person I can think of who are you talking about I know everything is so innocent yeah it is this time uh-huh yeah of course it is yeah of course it is yeah Whatever. Why are you tripping, yo? Doesn't matter, yo. You Why got some you... fucking boys hanging with you. you... <laughs> He's so fucking pissed off. It's awesome. You, you got your I boys mean, hanging there with you, yo. You, you got your boys hanging there with you, yo. So you can show them off all your fucking body parts. So, whatever, yo. Because what? that's exactly what people do. Whenever they're around, you know, the opposite sex, they just showing off their body parts. Why are you being mean to me? I don't know, maybe because you get one. Exactly, Lee agrees, Evil Twin. If you think she's constantly cheating on you, break up with her. And But the thing is, he won't, because he knows this is as good as it gets for him. Like, and And there's been some times where he comes so close to cracking it. Like, you can hear he's... You know, he's putting things together very slowly, and he, he he can almost figure out that they're fucking with him, but then he just goes the other way, and he just willfully ignores it, because the alternative is, I mean, he's already lonely as fuck as it is, so if he lost this catfish, he would be so, so much more lonely, and I think that terrifies him. Like, and in some ways, in these times, I mean, he'll get catfished again, um... He, he's potentially getting catfish right now and it just hasn't been released. But those times where, um, you know, the catfish is interrupted by either they break up with him, he goes to jail, that kind of stuff, that would be absolute torture for him. And I think he would take, he would take this over that. 
fucking, maybe because you want fucking guys opening your fucking asshole. Oh, my God. So no, you rub I don't. cream on you. No, I don't. Well, you certainly did this morning. Why are you saying that? Because you said it. Allowed all the guys to open your asshole with fucking rub cream on your asshole. Gee, what a wife. Why are you being so mean to me? Because you're not being honest with me. Yeah, I am. I love you. Yeah, you love me, but you're not being honest with me at all. Well, you apparently love all of your fake girlfriends, and you are never honest with them. So, par for the course, really, isn't it? Not even a little bit. You probably got some fucking guy right there next to you right now. No, I don't. It's only you, baby. Yeah, with the exception of that guy that's fucking right there next to you. There's no guy! Uh-huh. I'm sure you're in your sister's house, so you know there's a guy there. No. uh Yeah. Exactly, VA Hoss, uh, and you, you put that um, much better and more succinctly than I did, 100%. Um, he knows they're all catfish, um, but he willingly, he, but he's willing to suspend reality to avoid being alone in the evenings. Right. Why are you being mean? When I don't have to talk to him, I'll suck your cock. When I don't have to talk to him, I'll jack you off. What? If I talk to him, if I have to talk to him, I'll, you can see my finger, your finger in my pussy. What are you talking about? I'm so far from stupid. It'll make your fucking head spin. Remember saying that before? You talked about what I said before. So I know you remember it. What are you even fucking talking about it? Doesn't matter. You just want to play around while I'm fucking on the phone anyway. What is wrong with you? Who's the guy there that's with you? There's no guy. Right. Right. He's really, really drunk right now. What's your problem? Doesn't matter. You're getting your fucking jollies off night anyway. I don't have jollies. My butt hurts. <laughs> oh, gee, that tickled. Shut up. I don't have any fucking guy there. I don't have a guy there playing my fucking with my bug. Shut the fuck up. I'm watching America's Funniest Videos and I... And I hate the way he refers to it like that with your bug. He's, uh, every, everything he does is, is so gross. It's like he just finds the vilest way to talk about anything. Saw a penguin slip on his tummy into a fucking pool. Why is everything a threat right. to you? Because you put it there. Are you fucking kidding me? I have the TV Can't on mute watch. so I can hear you. Can't wash your can't wash your fucking vagina by yourself. No. Just want to touch of somebody else on your vagina. Doesn't matter if it's me. It just every some guy. Somebody. Some 
Some guy. Do you see why? You don't care what I say. Why now? Oh, oh, somebody there with you. I am Some asking. guy there with you. I am asking you. Do you see why that's funny? Because I am singing the touch of you, and you can't touch me. Right? You see what I'm telling you? No. You see what Come on, Lauren. Can you can you see the irony? Surely you can see the irony. I'm telling you. No. You, you don't listen to me. Fuck you. <laughs> oh, my God. Stop being mean to me. Stop being an asshole. Why do you keep fucking, like, being rude on me? Stop being an asshole. Why? I love you. No, fucking prove it. Okay. Fucking prove it. Why? Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Uh, Lee, Lee Greer's evil twin. Um, okay, wait, so if he's aware he's being catfished, does that mean he's aware enough to know he can't actually attract women in his area? Not, like, not subconsciously aware, but consciously aware of that. I don't really think so. Like, I, I don't know how this has happened, and it, but he, he does think he's... And it probably is one of those things subconsciously he knows. But he does believe he is incredibly attractive. Like, he does believe he can get women in that. And he chooses to suspend belief by saying, well, you know, I could have any girl I want, but I'm committed to these, you know, women I talk to on the phone. But he must, just through reactions, he must be aware. Like, he must be aware that he's not. But I, I think he's... Probably from a young age, he's developed this wall where, you know, if I say I'm attractive, if I say women are gawking at me, if I say, you know, I've got all these opportunities, it's reality. He just convinces me. He has an amazing um, uh, propensity for, for delusion. And in some ways, I think that's why he is so resilient because he can get into any situation where situations he gets himself into, like, I mean, you know, national disgrace on... To catch a predator, um, being recorded all these times where he knows there is people that just spend their time online making fun of him, going to prison twice. I mean, most people that would destroy them, um, and probably to the point where they might even take their own lives. But Lorne just carries on like he just he just puts it all aside. I mean, he prison didn't even really seem to bother him. He's quite amazing in that way. No. Is that really? Is that really how you fucking prove it? Let some other guy wash your fucking bug, your fucking vagina. My mug? <gasps> your fucking vagina. Holy Are you shit? Let some other guy touch your fucking vagina. And get a um, John and uh, Lance Crockett. Are you fucking kidding me? And Mandy is 100% crying lawn and also defeated lawn are my two favourite lawns. You don't fucking love me. The fucking show is that you don't fucking love me. Did you say mung or mug? Doesn't fucking matter. You don't, I don't love know what me. you mean. What the fuck is that? You don't love me. What do you want? What's your problem? You. you, you. You even sound like you're cheating on me right now. How the fuck does someone sound like they're cheating on you? Outside of if you heard, you know, the obvious sounds of sex, how the fuck could you tell over the phone if someone is cheating on you? Are you kidding? Please tell me you're kidding. Oh, no, I'm not kidding. Why? I'm not kidding at all. What is your problem? Because you sound like you, you sound like you have a fucking guy right there that you're Why? fucking flirting with and fucking I'm not doing and anything. folding your fucking and folding your legs across and he's fucking touching you all over and shit. What the fuck? 
fuck? You don't even sound like that right now. Uh, what? You fucking sound like you're doing. You sound like you're doing all that fucking shit right now. You know, it's, he he likes, like he must like building up these fantasies in his head. Like everything is always so explicit with him. Like he talks about, you know. You sound like you're spreading your legs and he's touching you and all this kind of stuff. Like, it is, and I think it's linked to his, his rage, like his rage holism, where he, he likes getting mad. Like, he likes that feeling of getting, and so this is something that works him up. So he goes into real explicit details, like, like he's getting off on it. And I don't mean getting off in, like, you know, jerking off, but he, he likes this feeling of being cheated on. Like, he's a cuck. Uh, you gotta be fucking kidding! Cause you don't give a fuck about me. No way! Are you are you serious? I am sitting here in my bed all alone, watching TV. Can you believe that? Can you fucking believe that, guys? How does? I won't merge yet. How does somebody sound like they're cheating unless they're going, fuck me? <laughs> yeah, he thinks he can hear me holding an unfold. Oh, I love Chris Fallen. So funny. Holding my legs. What? Oh, here's the one. Hold on. Hey, see, Morgul. What do you want? What is your major malfunction? Get out of that fucking chair with that fucking guy. I am Walk outside. in bed. Walk outside. I just, I should, there's a fucking guy I got in background. What? I'm watching TV. What the hell's wrong with you? You better pray there's no fucking guy around you. You better pray there's no fucking guy around you. You better pray that the fucking thoughts that I just thought was going on was not actually happening. What are you talking I'm, about? Are you listening to me at all? Nate, is it Steve Harvey? Oh, my God. G'day, Smash Burb. And they, that's, that's a good point, you know. He's paranoid about cheating because he's a habitual cheater himself. It, it, and that's another thing. Like, Lorne, much like the way he, um, you know, when we are talking about earlier about how he assumes that all guys are going to do shit, like, it's what he would do. If, he, if there was someone there, he would cheat with them, so he assumes that everyone does. But I do also think he just loves the getting rolled up. Uh, here we go, guys. Top six How's this? Now there's a guy here in the background. man. Name something she pretends yeah. like. Okay, Jim. She's cheating with Steve Harvey, that fucking bitch. It's personality. Turn up, turn up as loud as you want. And then right, tell me uh, who's there with you. You were listening to my TV and you thought there was... And even here, so she's explained that the noise you can hear in the background is my TV. Something he should be familiar with because pretty much that he always has the TV on in the background um, at his place. And so she's turned it up so she can hear. This is the voice you can hear. And now he assumes that she's turning it up to drown out the voices of all the guys that are there fucking her. There's a guy in the background. Ain't that fucking cunning? Check yourself, Lauren. Listen to how you sound. Check yourself before you wreck yourself, boy. Hello? Yeah, maybe you should listen to how you sound when you ask guys. Um, who, wants to, who wants to clean my asshole next? I don't say that. You guys want to take, you, you guys want to take turns cleaning my asshole? I don't I'm first. That. Oh, that didn't happen today? Uh, no. That did not happen today? No. Yeah, it did. Yes, it did. Yes, it fucking did. It happened earlier. That's why I fucking hung up. He said, call me later, baby. Because you're bullshit. 
who who wants six hundred screen in my asshole? I'm first. You really don't remember that? No. Bullshit. I, I know you. On, I know you remember it. Listen, I was on painkillers and Ambien. I don't give a fuck what you were on. The only guy that should be touching your body is me. <laughs> All the way from Maine. There is no way that you can fucking mistake that. Not even a little bit. No, I think if Lawn was touching you, you would definitely know. That would be an unmistakable touch. Not in a good way, but still unmistakable. If that fucking face is not me, no guy should be touching you. So don't give me no fucking horse shit. You just wanted some guy to fucking cut you. What? You didn't care. You didn't care that it was not me. What? You just wanted a guy. You just wanted a guy to be touching you. What? No. Is your asshole clean? Yeah. Yeah, uh, of course, because there was a couple guys there that was wanting to clean up. Uh, that's not why. And, and you invited them to clean it for you. It's because they took a shower. When I, was on, when, I, when I was on the phone. You mean while? I don't give a fuck. When? While? Who gives a fuck? Oh, I'm sorry. The fact of the matter is you cheated on me. I did not. Oh, yeah. Inviting other guys to clean your asshole is not cheating on me. I did it. Yeah, let me... Let me hear my... Let me bear my asshole to you. You can't get anything on. Let me spread my legs. That should help you get it clean. You want to see my pussy? You're not my husband, but I'll show you my pussy. You're fucking joking me. Why are you being so mean to me? Don't try to use a crying voice. It don't I'm want not. to fucking work anymore. Hey, uh, Twisted Maiden and the old or blue Staley. I hope I've said that right. I'm not. Me. I'm not. No, no, you just don't give a fuck about me. I do. Uh, be be back uh, in a sec, guys. I'll I'll keep it plain. Mm, oh yeah, yeah, that's obvious. Come here, fucking stranger. Clean my asshole. No. Yeah, you uh, give a fuck about me. Uh, yeah, real obvious. You give a fuck about me. I love you a lot. You're my husband. You're making me sad. Okay. It, it, it's showing. Uh, it's showing that I'm making you sad. Come here, stranger. Clean my asshole. Sad, I said. You're making me sad. Why are you being this yeah, well, way? <laughs> Don't think you're crying and shit. It's going to fucking feed me anyway. <laughs> I'm not the one opening up my asshole to everybody. <laughs> Today. <laughs> Today. Two fucking day when I was on the fucking phone with you. <laughs> so stop your fake crying. <laughs> you can stop your fake crying. You had your fucking dollars today, so whatever. I don't know why you're being you get off. so mean. I didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. You get off on other guys fucking wiping your ass for you. 
Oh, no, I don't. What about? Don't be mean. Mm-hmm. Well, you invited them to. So, yeah, you got your eyes off on all the guys fucking touching an asshole. What? I said, you get off on, you get your toys off and all the guys touching your asshole. My- He's so fucking gross. Um, and how many beers deep, Zola? Fucking heaps. Like, he would be, I don't know, 20, 25 beers? Like, he, he drinks so much, and that's the thing, he drinks so much, it, um, he needs more and more all the time. And uh, get a branch and get a um, uncle fucker. <laughs> Great name. When I was on the fucking phone. I love you. My. Yeah. My oh, phone yeah, was on up. you all day long. <laughs> sure it was. While the other guys were wiping your asshole. It was. I'm sure. Tells it. Why are you being like so mean? Because you're being so thoughtless. I love you. Man, well, fucking prove it. Mwah. You love me? You love me? There's no reason on earth why any fucking guy should be seeing you fucking naked! I'm sorry, baby. I love you. I'm sorry. You see that later on when you, that fucking guy comes over that you invited? No, I love you so much, more than anything in my life. <laughs> oh yeah, you fucking proved that today. A whole lot of fucking proof behind that one today. Hey, stranger. Can I take my nice naked body to the fucking bathtub? <laughs> hey, hey, stranger, you wanna wipe my fucking ass? Oh, oh wait a minute. Come here, come here, clean, come here, clean out my fucking pussy for me. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, I fucking love there. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds to me like another fucking internet game. Another internet game. So, if you're at the point where you have been fucked with so much that this is just another internet game, that's on you, okay? First time you're fooled, you know, 100%, you've been taken advantage of. I mean, no one's going to give a fuck because it's you, Lorne, and you're an asshole. But for someone, you know, someone who isn't you, there's someone who hasn't done the things you have, if someone on the internet fooled them and they done nothing wrong, 100% feel bad for them. The second time it happens, no sympathy. Because they try to make you jealous. Now I'm an internet game. All right, whatever. I think that you are really needing you to take a step back and ask yourself. You brought it on. Really you brought it on, Winnie. Your fault. Never Lawn's fault. Nothing is ever Lawn's fault. You want to act toward me right now when I'm not having an easy day. You brought it on. They asked you fucking rape. You brought all this fucking shit on me. Nuh-uh. The day after your fucking rape, you brought all this shit on me. So, come on, Winnie. Can't you see how you getting raped has impacted on Lorn? Oh, yeah, you did. It was all you. Every little bit of it. Nuh-uh. Oh yeah. No. I'm 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 sure, I'm sure there's guys there tonight. There's no guys there. Oh yeah. Great. Right. It's your sister's fucking house. Your sister's a fucking city slot. A city slot. And firstly, I hate the way he just calls, you know, people sluts all the time. Um, but so what's the difference between a city slut and a, like a country slut? Like, are they, are they different, Lorne? Is there a reason you have to distinguish? Is this the same reason you've got to distinguish between a slut and a male slut? Because, you know, in your head only women can be sluts, males can sleep with whoever they want and there's no impact there. 
Stop saying mean things. No. Why? Because that's true? No, it's just not nice. <laughs> yeah, you want to say it's not nice to me? If I can talk, like, talking like all this, and it's quite possible that you could have some guy fucking right there fingering you. Oh, my God. I can't believe you're saying those things. Stop now. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> trust is earned. Well, why should I? Trust is earned. Sends the dirty little motherfucker who has ripped off an old couple for 30 grand, who has tried to fuck one real kid who then tried to fuck a fake kid and got caught on national TV and all this other fucking shit this piece of fucking filth has done, he says trust is earned. Fuck yourself. I trust you. You had it mean. You had it you had my trust before. But all of a sudden these fucking coke addicts and fucking buggies and parties they that was so important for you to be at your sister's party. So important to be at your sister's party. Just for the party. Life is all about fucking party. Well, you get quite a fucking party now, aren't you? Probably because I'm on the phone and for all I know, some guy could be right fucking there. Fine. Well, you Look, this is really... This is really fucked. Like, I mean, this is... And yes, these are all stories, but in Lawn's head in Lorne believes that she has been raped the previous night and he thinks there's nothing wrong with talking like this and then talking about you have to go to the party you know completely victim blaming he is an absolute fucking piece of shit he it is offensive that it is offensive that he is still alive when good people die every day. I, times like this, I just, I even struggle to, to, I don't know. I, I, I don't even know what to say. Just, why are you just fucking laughing your ass off? I'm not. Yeah, you almost sound like it. I don't know why you're being so mean to me. Driving away from the guy's house yet? Shut up. Oh, that guy's driving you away from his house. Shut up. No. I'm not going to fucking shut up. Stop saying I'm a cheater. Why are you even... No, stop acting like that. No. I'm not doing anything wrong. Yeah, and how do I know? Shut up. You're being mean to me for no reason after you promised me not to. Yeah, well, prove to me that there's no guys around you. Prove it to me. You can't. So, how does he do that? How does he prove to her? What does she just go? Guys, guys, if you're here, come out, come out. I'll give you five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. See, Lorne, no one's here. How does she prove a negative? How does, when there's no guys there, how does she prove that there are no guys there? You can't fucking prove it. But for some reason, your ass has to be around a bunch of guys. And you want me to feel secure with you. I felt secure with you. And that's um that's where that one cuts off. I know there's a following one there. I just haven't been able to actually find it yet because it can be a bit hard in the dump there. Um, but yeah, so that is Lorne. 
I wouldn't say at his worst because that's really hard to define because his worst is varied, um, but definitely amongst his worth. Um, so after that call, I am even um, more glad that we are going to finish with an episode of the uh, Lawn Reality Show because I think we all need it after that. So today we're going to watch this complete fuck up cook rice pudding. Um, probably not very hard, but I'm sure Lawn will fuck it up. Hello everyone. Welcome to Leon, the Lawn Reality Show again. Um, today we're going to do a very easy meal that it, if you don't have much time, you can throw this together and it only take, only take about 20 minutes to throw it together and, and it it's, tastes very good. Um, I haven't had it for a long time, but it, it's called rice and raisins or another thing name for it is rice pudding. Such such a fancy sounding meal. I'm, I'm excited. Right now, boil about the well, I get about seven cups of water in here and you're going to want to take... Now guys... As you look at Lorne, um, just remember this is just the shirt he's wearing. I know it looks like he's got a beer gut there, but as we all know, he ain't fat and he ain't ugly. So it's just the shirt, guys. Okay, relax. Um, and g'day, uh, Michael Rodriguez. Um, you probably arrived for the best bit of the stream. Um, so. Take in and measure out the rice as you go. Just put what you think is going to be the right amount in there. I've got right here for what I think will probably be the right amount for the seven cups of water. And you want to get your water to boiling. Get your water to boiling, then you just pour the, pour the rice right in there. Killdeer, I don't know, but probably way more frozen pineapple than anything should ever have. And I even it out through the whole thing. So, well, depending on what you're using here, with me using this, it's I, I may wind up having to put a little bit more in water in there. So, I was <laughs> I was actually about to give Lawn some credit because I looked at that that Ziploc bag of rice and I thought, holy fuck, he has actually done some preparation for this one. He has measured out the exact amount of rice and water he needs because that is pretty, as all you know, that's pretty fucking important. You do need to have, you know, the right ratio to eat. But then, he, while I'm thinking, wow, Lorne, well done. He adds, oh, I might need to add some more water. Like, he's got no fucking idea. That was probably just the amount of rice this prick had lying around. This right here will be for like... Uh, for most college students that don't. And Branch says, I hope he coats this dish in sugar like last time. Yeah, so he coats, he coated his fucking spaghetti in sugar, which I had never seen that before in my life, and that is fucking atrocious. But knowing this guy, with a dish like rice pudding, where, you know, not that I would necessarily add sugar to it, but you could understand adding sugar to it if you wanted to sweeten up a bit, he probably fucking won't. Don't have much money or, or anybody that's in a bind that doesn't have much money or in a tight spot that doesn't have much time or something like that so that you know, it's, it's cheap and it's easy and, and it doesn't take long and it, it tastes good so um, while we're waiting for that to boil I got a little challenge for everyone Turn that down just a little bit. I got a few challenges for everyone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn turn the camera there a little bit. Now 
So he knows that rice takes a long time to cook. So he couldn't have cooked this in advance. You know, he couldn't he couldn't have done the typical here's one I prepared earlier. Like I mean, credit to him for showing how it's done. I mean, in the spaghetti thing, he didn't show us how anything it was cooked. It was just like, here's this slop that I prepared. <laughs> watch me, watch me combine it in a um, fry pan with no heat. But he doesn't do this in this one. And now he shows us how something's prepared. That's great. But couldn't he have already cooked some rice and go, so I don't waste your fucking time. Here's some I cooked earlier so we can do the last part of this monstrosity. No, no, we've got to have a fucking basketball exhibition from the, the um, future All-Star. First, thing, first challenge is juggle them. See if we can teach some people how to juggle. Get three balls here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this ball here up in the air and the other one will go under it and so forth. So, oh. well, I'm a little, little, little out of practice. I haven't done it for a while. So, Roscoe, you go lay down and be good. Roscoe, now. Sit, stay. And you got to be careful when you get a dog like Roscoe. You, Loves chasing after the balls, and he, then he winds up running off with them. And and f- fantastic lawn. Um, how great to have a dog um, in your kitchen where you've got balls, where it's probably going to run all around there while you're preparing food. Absolutely spot on. You know, I often wonder why we don't see Nigella or um, you know any of the other chefs do the same thing. Roscoe, get down. Uh-uh. Over here. Sit. Stay. Get too far away from each other. Yeah. No. Here, Roscoe, sit and stay in the corner while I throw around balls that you obviously want to grab. So just watch me do this, but you don't move, fucker. Over here. Over here. Over here, sit, stay. Yep. Kind of got to start them all closer together. You start them all too far apart and they don't, winds up getting you thrown off. Takes a little bit of concentration to, <laughs> to be able to get it. No, over here. No feet, come on. Sit. Stay. I don't know how well. Like, gives. what value does he think this is bringing? Like, what, what exactly does he think, pe- why does he think people would want to see this? You know, he, he's jumped on YouTube as his redemption story. Does he think everyone's just going to forget about the fact that he tried to fuck a kid because he can juggle three balls? Fucking hell. See this from the camera. Oh. And how many times is he going to juggle for five seconds before he drops everything and try again? Okay, where is it? Oh, well, Roscoe's got it, so that one's done. Okay, Roscoe. Thank you, Roscoe. Yeah. Heartfelt. Thank you. All right, that's the first challenge. See if you can juggle. The second challenge is a basketball. This, this, you can already tell this is going to be good. And what cooking show doesn't need, um, you know? Dexterity challenges thrown in. And we better pay attention to. Yes, Branch, um, one of the catfish. So these cooking shows were um, what Ramona convinced him to do. That's why most of them are are vegan, because Ramona was vegan. The rice here. Stir it up a little bit. Turn it 
turn that down some more. Turn that down about 200. So the rice hasn't needed stirring, you know, for the last five minutes while you've been poorly juggling. Second challenge is basketball. Now this basketball here is flat because well, I, I bought it for Roscoe. I didn't think he'd be able to get his mouth around it and probably poke a hole in it, but he wound up poking a couple holes in it, but it's still round and I tried it earlier with it and see if I can see if I can do it even when it's flat and I can. So it's a second challenge is putting the ball basketball on your finger. Uh Pee Wee is great. Um I'm not 100% sure, but I am fairly certain this is actually Lawn's trailer. Um, and this is probably as good as it is, has ever looked. Um, I, yeah, I can't say for sure, but I'm pretty sure it's his trailer. You can get it, you can get it right, and you got to keep it spinning. Nope. You just twist the ball, get it on your finger. I really, really want that basketball to end up in the rice. I would, um, I would love that. It'd be a lot easier if I had hair in it. And can we, um, just take a, like, a minute to reflect on what a loss to the world it was that, um, Lorne stopped playing basketball... I mean, look at these skills. He could have been, you know, it could have been LeBron who, you know, Michael Jordan who. I mean, he he was destined to be, if not the best, one of the best to ever do it. Keep it spinning and you just you quickly tap the sides. Air in it. I can do it for quite a, quite a while, but this one's no air in it, and it's got a little dents in it. And uh, g'day, Egbert Mendingo. Um, if you're just tuning in, no, this isn't an um, a recording of the Harlem Go Tr Globetrotters. It's the Lawn Reality Show. I just didn't want you to get, you know, confused when you've come on to this stream thinking, hey, I thought this was going to be a lawn stream. It's definitely not the Harlem Globetrotters. And it's also not um, Justin Timberlake hasn't started a cooking show. Um, so don't get confused. Where he bit into it. There's that right there. So that's the third challenge. And we're gonna the third challenge. What was the second challenge? To continue watching this, maybe. Well, let's see if we can put this on pause. We're going to stop this right here. <laughs> oh, shit. We're back, everyone. <laughs> Super smooth lawn. Third challenge that I have for you to do, Ross, where you get off. You get them off. There's, I don't know how to be able to do this. I, I have four quarters here. You can see, count the quarters. One, two, three, yeah. four. Yeah, we could have just taken your word for it, Lauren. Like, we, we didn't need you to count out your four quarters. Like, you're just showing off now. Uh, g'day, Lee, Leon Kennedy, and also Ben Cartwright, and Crocker Jones. Four quarters. Take two. Oh, let me put the, that on top of that. Turn this down. The other one's overcooked. Stick your quarters. Stick them on here. <laughs> you right you here. know he's going to fuck this up. Like I can tell that before watching he's going to fuck this up. On your elbow. And, whoops, 
<laughs> he goes and does it, and, and then like looks at the camera like like a fucking boss before he hears the quarters smash on the floor. Well, you flip your flip your arm down, you catch all your quarters, but I get one up catching three of them. If you can see them three quarters there. I want to catch them one when I drop one. So there's your third challenge right there. <laughs> In that short amount of time. Camp Bogle, it could be an audition tape for Benny H Hanna with all that dexterity. What are doing there? The race is pretty much... And Branch, I wonder that all the time. Pretty much done. And what you do... You just take your raisins. I don't, I don't have much little raisins left in there. It'll probably go right up the boat where it shows those raisins. The box was full, but... Quarter of these aren't important, Lorne. Don't worry about it. What you do is you take them. Throw your raisins right in here. And just stir your raisins around. And then this juice and water in here will we'll take and mix up with the raisins. Juice. Save your juice, baby. Um... And the other thing, so he's just been juggling, you know, balls that Sadie plays with. He's then been fucking spinning a um, a basketball that Sadie has punctured. So, obviously, her mouth has been all over it. Sorry, not Sadie, Roscoe. Um, and then he's been playing with dirty quarters. Definitely no need to wash your hands when you're making food lawn. Just don't, don't think about washing that. Don't worry about all that bacteria. Just fucking go right for it. And Branch here is making rice and raisins, of course. Um, and hi, right the hand, Lulu Bob 19. And it'll pump the raisins out so that it gives them a little bit more thickness and, and makes Save more of the taste of the raisins. And you don't need it in there for very long. Oh, lovely, yeah. Pick that stuff up that's fallen on that dirty table with your dirty fucking hands and chuck it into chuck it into the food lawn. Mwah, perfect. So, Branch, I'm pretty sure it's just rice pudding, which he's ch chucked some fucking rains in to try to make it fancy. You need, to, you need to keep it all going for very long because it'll, it'll pump the raisins up pretty fast. We'll take and stick this cover over it for a minute. Camera back over this way. Um, problem, um, quite possibly going to be doing another show today <laughs> with with a vegan dish. L Lee Greer, he's nasty hands is where the flavor comes from. Haven't you noticed? He never seasons anything. That's um, that's a good point. Um, we'll see if I have time to do it or not. Seasoned with love and sweat and dirt and cum. It's gonna be. A Kind of a close call, but hi, highway man T, and yes, this was during the Ramona days. If, if I can do it, then I then I get it. You'll actually notice um, on the end of all of his little cooking shows, his stupid fucking credits uh, are himself and um, a special friend or a special guest or some shit. He says he's um he's referring to um, Ramona when he says that. And Combat Mechanic will give me $100 if I take a bite. Um, there is quite a few things I would do for $100, but that is not one of them. Get in there. If not, then at least we'll have this one dish here for today. Stick that off of there. You only want to leave this in there for a few minutes. Well, maybe a minute. Maybe two minutes, just enough so it pumps out the raisins. It makes, it makes the raisins a lot thicker, and like I said, it brings out more of the taste in the raisins. Yeah, we'll turn that off. That's right, Kildee, my special vegan coach. That's her title, um, which is. Which is very appropriate because during the Ramona saga, it, no one had names, they were just titles, you know, bro, the therapist, the doctor, the neighbour. So um, it's it's um, quite appropriate that she was just referred to as the vegan coach, or his vegan coach. Turn that off there and plug that. 
make sure we don't let that stick to the bottom. It just looks like slop. It doesn't like when you cook rice properly, you know, it's it's fluffy, it's um, you know, separate, it's this just looks like fucking slop. That right there is your, your rice and raisin, or your rice pudding is what it's actually called. It's the correct name of it. I've always just called it rice and raisins. But then, then what you want to do, do I, let's even this out here. Oh, Lee Grease Evil Twin. That looks like some seasoning there, my friend. You are about to be made to look like a fool, lawn style. Then what you want to do is take nutmeg. You now I'm still going to just get any kind of nutmeg. This right, this right here is ground nutmeg. But you want to take and sprinkle the nutmeg over the top of your, your rice pudding. Um, That'll wind up giving it more flavor. That's more than you a sprinkle. You don't want to overdo it with a sprinkling. I get a large amount here. You don't want to overdo it with the sprinkles, so I am going to fucking coat it. So, you know, just enough so it, it'll color the top of it, and the last thing you want to do is put too much in it, then it won't, it won't taste very good at all. Just do enough to cover the top of it, and just mix it all in. Michael Rodriguez, I'm not shocked they didn't jump on the table to eat it, because... I wouldn't want to fucking eat it if if I'm a dog. I'm not eating that shit. And g'day, sassy pea water, eh? Um, uh, great to see you. It even smells good too. Nutmeg smells good. Mix it all in like that. And yeah, sassy pea water, right? He doesn't know that this should have sugar in it, but he does know that spaghetti should have fucking sugar all over it. This stupid effing. Mm. <laughs> Eggbert, he literally is not good at anything in life. Very true. And g'day, Gamer Guy. Great name, by the way. Now, now you get you a bowl. Doesn't have to be a big bowl, just a small bowl. Get your milk. And a spoon will probably help. Game the guy, he did put sugar on spaghetti, so two streams ago. Um, because I finish every stream at the moment with an episode of this um, Lawn Reality Show, and we did the vegan spaghetti that he made. Um, so jump, jump back and watch it. it it's the um, well, I did it. I mean, you can you can either watch it at the end of my stream, which was the first um, Bald Beaver Hunter stream, or you can see it on his channel. But yeah, watch it because it, it blew my fucking mind. Like the whole thing looked like a monstro monstrosity to start off with. But then at the end, he coated it in sugar. I've never seen anyone put sugar on spaghetti before in my life. It blew my fucking mind. In your bowl. You can actually have as big of a bowl as this as you want. Normally, when I'm real hungry, I'll, I'll grab a regular sized bowl, but maybe just a small bowl. Like, this is dessert. This is pudding. This should be something you have after a meal. But he's treating it like this is going to be his fucking dinner. Enough for me for right now. Yes, Brands. It was a fuckload of sugar. Like, it was so much sugar. It was more sugar I've put on anything. Like, it was more sugar than I've put in the cake. I've, I, yeah, I, it, as you can see, it's broken my brain. Pour some milk in it. Dump a little bit of sugar on top. DNA, g'day, and um, exactly, he's he's cooking level is so low, it's like a child trying to figure it out. I'm I'm surprised we didn't have an episode that was like making cereal. 
or some shit like that, or buttering toast. Fucking idiot. Um, oh, hi, um, Dark Atheist. Um, well, if this is your first stream, I hope it hasn't been overly disappointing, and g'day, 80s girl. This is actually good for breakfast, lunch, or supper, or dinner. Nah, it's dessert. In main we have the word supper is also used for dinner. I know in a lot of parts of the country they just call it dinner. In, in Maine, in New England, call it call it dinner or supper. And you don't want to make sure you don't eat it when it's too hot and burn your mouth. Game the guy, it's rice and raisins in milk. Clearly. Hi, Johnny D. Oh. Well, the cold, the cold milk cools it down pretty fast. Mmm. Here it is. I might have to have an elbow after this. It's been a long time since I've had it. Almost <laughs> right the hand. Rice, raisins, and disappointment. And a few interesting things there. That is the out of the cooking shows we've watched so far... He, that is the first time he's had a second spoon. Usually, um, he has a spoon and he has this look of like, holy fuck, what have I just put in my mouth? The camera's rolling, so I better say, hmm, that, that, that's actually quite good. Um, but this time he's gone back for a second spoon because even though he has fucked this up, it probably doesn't taste that bad because really, how much can you fuck it up? It's, it's rice, it's raisins, and it's, some milk and it's nutmeg. Like, even he would make that taste not revolting. So it's interesting that that's the first time he's actually gone back for a second scoop. And I fully believe him when he says that he's going to, um, to have quite a bit more. I bet you this, this fucking, you know, pig fills up. I don't know what it tastes like, but it's good. But that's it for today's show. Um, like I said, I might, if I have time... And I'll do a, a vegan dish uh, again uh, later on, and then if, if not, we'll get the exactly. Um, Lee Greer's evil twin. Frozen pineapples would have worked better with this dish. I mean, why he had to use frozen pineapples? But it's like everything is back to front. Like the the frozen pineapples that he put into already cooked vegan porkless bites, so that. They were so hard, he had to smash them to try to pull them apart. Um, you know, that could have been done in this one. The sugar over the spaghetti could have been done in this one. But, no, nah, we don't do that. Vegan dish in another time, in, uh, another weekend. Well, Dark Atheist, he has cooked enough to be for his family from Nup North. But, no, I, I think this is going to be all for Little Lorny. Um, well, that's all there is for today. Thank you very much. No, thank thank you, Lorne. Are we, are we not? Oh, here we go, here we go. Here are the credits, guys. Ah, oh, I guess because it wasn't a vegan dish, um, poor Ramona didn't get a shout-out as his um, special vegan coach there. So, um, the, uh, yeah, I, I love finishing a stream with one of these, so I'm going to keep that up. And I did really enjoy getting back to Lawn. Like, I, I did not I did enjoy doing the um, bald beaver hunter stuff, and I will still do some of that from time to time, some of the TCAP stuff. But, you know, fuck, Lawn is just... He just never stops. He, he's, um, he's a source of constant entertainment and frustration and anger, but mainly entertainment. Um, so... I'm going to wrap it up here, guys. Thank you all so much for being here. Um, it's always so much fun hanging out with you. All the stuff you guys put in the chat is just fantastic. Um, makes makes me laugh, makes me think, you know, and some of your insights are just, just perfect. So thank you all for being here. Um, I'm hoping to um, do a stream in two days' time. Um, which I think if I've done my conversions right for most of you, for at least, you know, the ones in America, that's going to be your Thanksgiving. So I don't know if um, you guys, um, you know, will be busy doing that. So, but I'll, I'll stream anyway. If you're around, jump on. Um, if not, um, that's all good. Um, but hopefully we can have a couple of laughs to, um, to finish your turkey day, hey? 
All right, guys. Um, thanks again. Don't forget... Sorry, don't forget to delete your archives, and I'll talk to you all again very soon.